Yo, what's up everyone? Long time no see. I hope you've all been doing well. Today I'm going to show you how to make a braided USB cable, just like this. But anyways, um, before we get started here, I uh, just want to thank you all for watching the video first. Um, and also for all those of you who are supporting me um, through subscribing to the channel. Um, if you aren't already, it's just a click away. Uh, but it's been awesome to see how many people have been joining the community on this channel, uh, as well as the different social media outlets. Um, and it's awesome to see that, you know, the, the way I've been able to engage with folks and get involved um, with them making some stuff that they're proud of. Um, but yeah, um, just as an update, um, this channel is now part of the YouTube Partner Program, so you may see some ads um, on the videos. Um, but that all goes to supporting me, and with that kind of funds that I've been getting through that, I've actually been able to upgrade some of my um, recording equipment. So I actually have like this really cool like overhead rig um, to kind of record my videos now, and also investing in like some different cameras and stuff like that. So um, it's really awesome to be able to kind of create this content um, and kind of give back to the community by creating valuable videos to, I don't know, inspire folks to um, kind of be able to create something that they're proud of, which is kind of one of my big goals through the videos that in my channel here. But anyways, I just got finished um, with quite a few cable group buys. I'll leave some pictures right here. Um, but yeah, it's been really quite a journey making this many cables um, in the past few weeks. And um, yeah, it, it was quite a time and I learned a lot about myself. Um, but anyways, um, without further ado and without taking more time here, uh, let's go hop into the video and I hope you really enjoy um, how I make my braided cables and I hope you'll be inspired to make one yourself. Alright, so first off, let's show off what's going to go into this build. I'll have links in the description below with all the parts and tools that I'll be using. But here first I have some 28 gauge wire that I've probably had since uh, college. Next we have some 95 nano cord. I forgot the exact name of these colors, but it's a teal and purple. Last we have some of my personal um, stock of parts, uh, USB A, USB C connector, as well as some heat shrink, um, which you can find in the cruise control store. All right, so first off, we're gonna take our paracord here. I'll be using two colors, this tealish blue and purple. I'll be sleeving four separate wires for this type of cable, so it's pretty fun experimenting with the kind of different color combos you can make. Alright, for this video I'll be measuring about two feet of paracord to sleeve each wire. Do be mindful that your cable will be shorter than the length you cut after it's sleeved and braided. In addition, I typically trim a few inches of the sleeved cable towards the end. Here I'm cutting the paracord with a little pair of scissors. I found these to be incredibly useful, especially for making braided cables. I'll put a link in the description where you can find a pair of scissors like these. So here, I'm taking the strand from my first cut and using it as a guide to measure how long I should cut my next strand. After making this cut, I'll be repeating this process for the remaining lengths of paracord. Cool. Now that we have all of our lengths cut, I'm gonna go clean up this little space here and look at our cool cut colored paracord. Alright, so next off I'm going to remove the inner strand from our paracord links. Um, take your time doing this. You want to make sure you don't snag on any of the sleeving that you're going to be using. Typically if you're using a new batch of paracord, um, some of the sides or ends may be heated so you might want to snip those off to make sure that you can freely remove the inner strand. And I'm going to be doing this for all of the individual links here. All right, so I'm gonna grab my handy dandy lighter and lightly heat the ends of my paracord. Um, make sure not to be too heavy with the heat here because you may run the risk of actually closing up the space where you're gonna be sleeving your wire. So be careful and be light, like the lighter. <laughs> All right, so here's where the real fun begins. We're gonna go ahead and sleeve each of these wires individually. Um, this may take some time, so make sure to grab a nice beverage, maybe put on a good movie, and enjoy the process of sleeving these wires. I typically like to leave a little um, bare wire length at each end, as I will use that for soldering towards the end. And here, to save the time, here's all of my sleeved wires that I finished and just got done. Right, so here I'm just arranging my wires in the order I'm going to solder them on. Oh yeah, these colors are looking really good. Really excited to see how this cable's gonna turn out. 
All right, so we're gonna hop into the soldering portion of this build. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my DIY USB cable video. Um, basically, it's the same methods I do there. So I'll add a card to this video right here. Um, so make sure to check that out because I'm basically doing the same thing I'm doing here, but with a little different layout. But yeah, so anyways, um, right here, I'm just stripping the cable, making sure that we have some tips exposed for us to solder on. So I'm gonna start off with the USB-C connector here. Since the USB-C connector has the smaller housing, I found it easier to kind of start with it because there's a smaller margin of error. But yeah, um, pretty standard procedure here. Just gonna solder this on and make sure I tin all the pads um, to make these connections. Um, but if you're looking for the soldering diagram for how I am soldering on these wires, I will leave a resource in the description below. And put each individual wire onto my little helping hands tool here and gonna solder each one of them on individually. Um, I will say you gotta make sure that you have good solid connections, uh, especially when you create your solder joints, um, because being a braided cable, there will be some strain in the process of kind of um, braiding it. So just really make sure that you have um, solid, solid, solid solder points that you um, put in here. But yeah. Um, gonna fast forward through this. I think you hopefully get the idea. But yeah, make sure to check out that DIY cable video if you've never seen this process before. But yeah, um, just make sure everything's done right and done well the first time. All right, so first off, I'm going to kind of pull up these individual sleeves um, to get them as close to the connector as possible. Uh, I typically don't want them to touch the connector itself, but I do want to get as close as possible just to make sure that they are going to be held um, inside the connector housing. But yeah, so how I do this is I just grab the paracord uh, from the other end of the wire and then I kind of just slide it up to kind of get it closer to our connector here. And then after that, just make sure to remove the slack if there's any left over. But yeah, take your time to do this, um, especially once you get in the process, you really don't want to redo this part because um, this does dictate um, how your cable's going to turn out. So yeah, take your time, make any adjustments as needed, uh, and make sure that you have some nice sleeved wires for you to work with and braid. Alright, so after that, I'm going to add our housing store USB, USB-C connectors here. Uh, do make sure that you want to keep your wires neatly tucked inside of the housing and make sure that snaps into place to make sure your um, connector is secure. But yeah, I'm gonna crimp these down with a little pair of pliers. Make sure that all of the wires are in there and kind of not fraying or not sticking out. But yeah, looks like we got it done here. All right, so here's where the braiding happens. I'm gonna put this on my helping hands and kind of spread these apart. So from left to right, let's think of the wires as one, two, three, and four. So I'm gonna wrap the fourth wire over the third and then kind of push it up a little and now I'm gonna take the first wire and wrap it over the wire that I just wrapped so I'm gonna do this here and I'm just kind of like pull out the length to kind of smoothen it out and make sure that it's even so I'm gonna do it again so four over three and then I'm gonna do one over the one that I just wrapped and I'm going to even it out. As you see, I'm putting pressure on the part that I just braided um, as I don't want it to get loose. Um, I'm not no master braider, but um, there's a, I guess there's infinite ways to braid. Uh, this is just kind of the way I, I found to do it. Um, but yeah, if you're a braider and you know all the different types of braids, um, yeah, feel free to be creative and try some new things out. But this is the way that I've kind of just found to be pretty consistent and Make it come up pretty nice. But yeah, word of advice, just make sure you're consistent as possible with each of your braids. But since this is going to take a while, um, let's go fast, fast, fast.
Alright, so since I've just finished my tofu delivery, I'm going to put the last braid that I finished onto my helping hands and secure it um, just to make sure that it doesn't lose its shape. Alright, so I want to secure this to make sure that it's easier to work with, so I'm going to use the twist tie. And by this, I'm able to kind of keep its shape. Um, while also being able to kind of trim off the paracord and also as I will solder it afterwards. Okay, so I snipped off the extra twist tie just to get out of the way and now I'm going to get started cutting um, our individual wires at the end to make them fit in our USB-A connector. Um, I kind of use the USB-A connector housing itself to kind of figure it out and from there I kind of make an initial snip. It's better to make this first snip um, longer than it needs to be because um, you can always um, kind of correct it afterwards. Alright, so I'm going to take my pair of tweezers and just use the sharp end to kind of undo the, the weave of the paracord. Um, this is a pretty easy way to kind of loosen it up uh, because we want these um, threads from the paracord to be removed so we have our wire exposed. Alright from there I'm just going to give this thing a little haircut, uh, just trim it off. Um, this is where the scissors really come into play I feel. But yeah, just want to trim throughout the edges, get all the nooks and crannies, get all the spots that haven't seen the light in a while. And yeah, just make sure you do this as clean as possible because this will help you out as you um, solder these on the USB-A connector. Alright, so after making some final adjustments and cleaning it as much as possible, I'm going to go ahead and strip the cables or the wires here. Um, similar to the USB-C side, I just want a little uh, wire exposed for me to solder. Take your time doing this and make sure you have enough exposed for your solder joints. Alright, so I'm going to clean up a little and I'm going to go ahead and go to my USB connector. Similar to the USB-C side, um, if you haven't seen this process done before, um, definitely make sure to check out that DIY USB cable video if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to tin our wires and tin the connector itself. And from there, I'm going to solder on the individual wires. Um, again, if you want reference, feel free to check out uh, the resource that's going to be linked in the description below. But yeah, make sure you have all of your solder points in. Thankfully, since you cleaned it up and put the zip tie on, it should be fairly easy to do this process. Um, so yeah, have your solder points done and looking good. Alright, so let's go ahead and test the cable here. Um, feel free to use also a multimeter if you'd like to test continuity, but I feel pretty confident in my connections that I made here. So I'm just gonna plug this in with my laptop and drop CTRL keyboard. Yeah, looks like we got power. Um, nice solid RGB, nice and bright. So I think we have some good connections here. Something that I like to do is just tap Alt Tab a bunch of times on the keyboard, um, just to make sure that it's working and responding with my computer. But yeah, looks like it's working properly. And I think we have our test cable and it's ready to kind of finish off here. So next off, I'm going to actually remove the twist tie. Um, since we have all of our wire soldered on, that's enough to secure it already. So I'm going to carefully remove this here um, just to kind of free this up as I want to have space for the connector to crimp um, over our wires here. So yeah, make sure to not damage <laughs> your your sleeve wires uh, in this process. So yeah, I'm going to start off with the USB-A, the larger part of the housing. Slide the connector right into it. Make sure it's nice and secure and it should be flush with the tip of the connector. So then I'm going to grab the crimp part and just make sure that I secure it on. It should snap into place uh, by just like, you know, kind of fidgeting and make sure that it's lined up properly. Yeah, um, similar to what we did with the USB-C housing earlier. Just gonna use some pliers to put it together. But yeah, just make sure that your wires are all secured inside of the housing um, and it's gonna be secured with the crimp part. You don't want any loose um, kind of paracord or wires um, not inside the crimp part of your USB um, housing here.
All right, lastly, we're gonna um, apply the heat shrink. I like cutting these just enough to cover the connector and the crimp portion of the connector. Um, but yeah, I take a light heating first um, and I make any adjustments along the way. I do want this to be lined up as cleanly as possible. So I take my time in this part. Um, yeah, making small adjustments here and there as I heat through it. But once I get it uh, in place, I just go ahead and full send the heat and make sure that the heat shrink is on properly. Yeah, there we have our done USB-C with the heat shrink on. Now we're gonna go to USB-A. Um, similar to the USB-C, I have it cut to length just to cover a portion of it. But yeah, um, I feel like the USB-A is pretty easy to heat shrink on cleanly because it's, it's a larger platform, so yeah. There we have it. Nice and heat shrinked on. And that's it. We have our finished cable and in all of its glory, we have our braided cable. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you're even inspired to make a custom cable, braided cable, just like this. Um, if you wanna see more custom cable content or even custom mechanical keyboard content in the near future, definitely hit the subscribe button, maybe even the bell button if you want to too. Um, and just keep an eye out for more videos in the near future. Um, also, if you're interested in some of the parts that I used in this um, build, I have my own shop, cruisecontrol.gg. Um, I'll also leave the link in the description, but yeah, I have some parts available. I pack them myself, so it's a good time. And lastly, um, if you want to join me on social, um, I have a cable Instagram, Cruise Control Cables. Um, if you want to see more regular kind of like custom cable pictures and stuff like that, as well as a Twitter and also a Discord server as well, which the links will be down below. But yeah, I hope you enjoy this and I hope you have a great time exploring custom cables. But anyways, without ado. I hope you all make wise choices. <laughs>